Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookalicious, where we discuss all things books. I'm super excited to be filming my June reading wrap up. I read 11 books in June and I completed my entire TBR that I selected. I feel like I deserve some applause because this is the first month that I have ever completed my TBR. So I am extremely happy with that. And without further ado, let's get right into the video and talk about all the books that I read in the month of June. The very first book that I read in the month of June was Glint by Raven Kennedy. I am completely obsessed with the Plated Prisoner series. This is book two in the series, so I of course cannot talk about this book too much because I would hate to spoil anything. But all I can say is that it is such an amazing continuation of where we left off in book one. The story is about this young woman named Orin who is gold touched. She is completely golden and this makes everybody very in awe of her, you know, but they kind of treat her like a possession. They don't really treat her like a person. She has spent a lot of her life living in this cage in this palace and the person who keeps her in this cage is King Midas. He can turn anything to gold and he has turned her into gold and she loves him so much. She admires him so much and it's hard for her to admit that he does keep her trapped in this cage and that it's not really out of love as to why he does that so you kind of see her go on this whole amazing journey of self-discovery and learning to stick up for herself this series is so so addictive the writing style is just really easy especially if you're not like a big fantasy person then the writing style is just really easy to understand there's not too much heavy complicated world building and there is a new character in book two who i'm not going to spoil for you guys but he is just so amazing i am obsessed with that man i'm obsessed so if you love enemies to lovers if you love dark fantasy if you love fey and magical books then i think you definitely need to try and pick up this series it is so good i'm currently on book free right now as soon as i finish filming this video i will be binge reading book free absolutely loved this book six stars the second book that I read in June was I Hope This Doesn't Find You by Anne Liang. And I hope this book does find you. I hope it finds everybody because it was so perfect. Five stars. Absolutely loved this one as well. And it follows our main character named Sadie. And she is a super smart and just super focused student. She's a very big perfectionist and she has a lot of pent up frustration because a lot of her classmates kind of take advantage of her being super smart and they'll make her do some of their homework assignments and then she also has this little grudge against her co-captain named Julius and he just gets on her nerves so much and so she's written all of these really mean emails and one day someone sends out all of her emails and her life at school is turned upside down and with all of this going on her and Julius are having to work together for this school assignment thing and so there's a lot of forced proximity between them there's a lot of enemies to lovers tension a lot of rivals to lovers going on as well and this book was just so perfect such a wholesome sweet YA romance if you are a big YA romance fan then you definitely need to add this book to your TBR. I absolutely loved the characters. I loved Julius. I loved Sadie and their romance was just the best thing ever. This was enemies to lovers and rivals to lovers done right. So good. Couldn't recommend this book more. The next book I read was Hate Mail by Donna Marchetti and this is her debut book and I had a lot of fun with this one. I gave it four stars. It was a very cute rom-com and it's basically about these two characters named Naomi and Luca who have been pen pals since fifth grade and at first a lot of their letters were really mean to each other but over the years they developed a really sweet friendship 
and one day the letters just stop. Luca just stops sending letters one day and Naomi's so confused about that and eventually he writes her a new letter that ends up at the new station that she's working at and she is determined to try and track him down and finally meet her pen pal. This was a very interesting romance because there is a little bit of a plot twist which I wasn't expecting because like I don't necessarily anticipate plot twists happening in rom-coms but there was a plot twist in this one and I think it was handled very interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I loved it or if I disliked it but it was definitely interesting to read about and I had fun with this book. The writing style was very breezy and easy to get into and I liked the characters. They weren't life-changing but I liked the book. It was a fun time and I would recommend it if you are in a rom-com mood. The next book I picked up was The Duff by Cody Keplinger and I watched the movie like ages ago, like well before I read the book. The movie is 10 out of 10, infinity out of 10. The movie is like my favorite thing in the entire world. I love that movie. So I was very excited to read the book knowing that the book has a very different plot than the movie. But I really enjoyed this book. It was very, very funny. I absolutely loved the main character, Bianca. And the overall plot of this book is just that Bianca is a very cynical teenager. She's not really looking for love or a relationship or anything like that. And she really doesn't like this popular guy named Wesley Rush because he's known to be a bit of a um how do I say this politely he's known to be a bit of an f boy um that's the best way I can put it and she just really hates him until one night she decides to kiss him and this leads to them having a lot of um special time together because Bianca really wants him to distract her from a lot of the heavy issues that are going on at her home and she just needs him to be a distraction for her until of course real feelings start to develop between the two of them and I really had fun of this book. I really loved Wesley. I think he's such a really funny character and I really loved the way that him and Bianca weren't like a good match for each other at the start of the book but then at the end of the book you really see that they do genuinely care for each other and have feelings for each other and I really loved that progression of their relationship and I think this book was just a really fun time five stars for sure the next book I read was Want to Know a Secret by Frida McFadden. I absolutely love her books. They are some of my quickest books to get through. I absolutely love her thrillers and her plot twists are always super fun. This one was a little bit predictable. I kind of predicted this one, but I still had fun with it. It follows our main character named April, who is a very popular YouTuber. She has this whole cute little baking channel and she has a great family and her life seems really picture perfect. But behind the scenes, she has a lot of secrets going on in her life and she's even getting these threatening little text messages that she doesn't know who's sending them and this new family has also moved into the neighborhood and she's very suspicious of the wife Maria and she thinks that this woman may be out to get her. I really enjoyed this one. It was a very fast and addictive book to get through because I just needed to see if I was right about my little plot prediction and I was right about the plot twist but even so I think that this book was just still incredibly exciting and it kept my attention and I really liked the way that everything was wrapped up at the end so I would definitely recommend this one if you just want a fun little thriller book to binge because Frida McFadden is the best at writing bingeable thrillers. The next book I read was The Inmate by Frida McFadden. This is my second Frida McFadden book of the month and this is probably my least favorite book by her. It was still really addictive, really bingeable, really fun, but listen, I know that she writes 
tons of books. Like I feel like she comes out with at least four books every year and I feel like when an author writes so much that sometimes their books can all kind of seem like the same and in this book I was like wait a minute this sentence I could have sworn I've seen this sentence in another one of her books or this character resembles this character from her previous book and that's kind of how I felt about this book but regardless, it was still really, really fun. It had a really good plot. The main character in this book gets a job working at this prison and she's basically like the nurse to take care of all of these prisoners. And one of the inmates happens to be the man who is in jail for attempting to kill her, her ex-boyfriend who attempted to murder her some years ago back when they were in high school. And she is convinced that it was him who tried to kill her. But as the book goes on, you kind of get to see that there are some other suspicious characters who may have had a hand in trying to kill her that night. And it's just a really addictive and very intriguing book. Again, the writing style was not the best at times. Sometimes the writing style just felt a little bit lazy in certain areas. It could have been better for sure. But I think the plot was really fun and this is another book by her that I would recommend. The next book I read was King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. I gave this one three stars. It was not my favorite book. It was not a fun time for me. It basically follows our main character Isilda. I hope I'm saying her name right. And she enters into this arranged marriage with this notorious vampire named Adrian to try and keep the peace between their kingdoms. And this book just did not not work for me at all um, and which is such a shame because I was positive that this was gonna be a five-star read for me I was going into this with such high expectations because it has some of my favorite tropes it's got enemies to lovers and arranged marriage I love those tropes and I love them so much when they are combined but this book just didn't feel romantic I didn't feel like they had any tender sweet emotional romantic moments. They definitely had a lot of the physical lusty aspects of their relationship going on. Like there was so much spice in this book. Like literally that's all they did was just spice each other. That's all they did. And I was really missing just the sweet quiet, emotional, romantic moments between them. I didn't feel like there was enough of those. And then I also just really couldn't stand Isilda, the main character. I just couldn't stand her. I liked him. He was fine. But Isilda was just so annoying and argumentative for no reason. And I just really couldn't warm up to her or care about her at all. And yeah, I just felt like this book was really messy. I feel like the side characters could have been developed more and I just didn't enjoy this book that much. Free Stars is being generous. I could have gone lower, but considering the fact that it does have some of my favorite tropes, I decided to give it Free Stars anyways. But yeah, I will definitely not be continuing with this duology or this series at all, and I'm very disappointed by this book. The next book I picked up was Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This definitely helped pick up my mood after King of Battle and Blood and I gave this one 4.25 stars. I can't tell you too much about this one because this is a sequel to Daughter of the Pirate King but I can say that this book is extremely adventurous. It continues the journey of Alasa, our main character, who is a very clever and strong and resilient pirate. It's got a lot of found family. It's got a great little romance subplot going on. And there's also this really big race to find this treasure before someone else does. 
and I really enjoyed this book. It was really fun and fast paced and it kept my attention and I was in a little bit of a reading slump after reading King of Battle and Blood and this book definitely helped me to get out of my slump and I would recommend this series. I, I did enjoy the first book more than this one. I think this one was a little bit slower at times than the first book, but overall I think this series is really, really fun, really underrated, so I definitely recommend that you read this. The next book I read was The School for Good and Evil sequel, A World Without Princes, and I love this book. I love this series so much. This is a reread for me, and it is a middle grade book, but the writing is so clever and so witty and just so amazing that anyone of any age can enjoy this series, so I highly recommend it to you. I love this book so much. It definitely is one of the more emotional books in the series and I can't tell you too much because it is a sequel but basically Sophie and Agatha, our main characters, find their way back to the school for good and evil and there's a lot of high stakes going on and both of them are in immense danger and need to try and find their way back home again and I really enjoyed this book because of the different themes that are explored. In book one, it was very heavily focused on showing the differences between good and evil. In this book, it is centered on boys versus girls, and I really enjoyed that theme of the book. And I just loved all of the side characters coming back. I love Sophie so much. She's my favorite character ever. And I'm always going to be Team Sophie. I support her rights and I support her wrongs, always. And I just think this book was so, so much fun. I'm so happy that I'm doing a reread of this series and I cannot wait to start book free. The next book I read was Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This is such a popular book on Bookstagram, BookTok, BookTube everywhere and I finally got around to reading it and oh my goodness this is the definition of rich people drama this is 100% Gossip Girl set in London and I watched every season of Gossip Girl and that show drained me it drained me there was no one good in that show except maybe Nate but that aside, I finally read this book and I gave it three stars. I feel like it was between a 2.75 to a three stars, but I decided to go with three stars because the writing style was really good and very poetic and beautiful at moments. And I highlighted a lot of uh, very beautifully written sentences. So I decided to give it three stars. But oh my goodness, this book was so exhausting. There's no really like concrete plot to this book. You're basically just following Magnolia Parks and uh, BJ Ballantyne. Is that his last name? I don't remember and I don't really care. Uh, but anyways, you're following them and their friends and their whole rich group in London. They're just a bunch of socialites influencers, very rich people, very rich families, and Magnolia and BJ had this really long history. They knew each other in boarding school and they've been dating on and off for a very long time. This is because BJ has cheated on Magnolia and she has had her heart broken but she still loves him so much they still have so much history between them so they have this very weird relationship where it's like they're not together but then they get jealous if you know they're hanging out with other people she'll get jealous if he is hanging around with other girls he'll get jealous if she is in a new relationship and it's just this extremely toxic relationship that hurts them and it hurts the people that get involved with them and this book was just so exhausting so toxic I don't understand how this book is seen as romantic I don't think this book is romantic at all I don't think BJ is a good person or a good character to root for Magnolia has her issues as well but at the same time it's just like I feel so bad for her 
But at the same time, she frustrates me so much because I just don't understand why she can't walk away from this toxic relationship. And I'm not trying to put down people who enjoy this book because it is a work of fiction. If this was a real life book and people were romanticizing it, then I would be confused. But it is a fictional book with fictional characters. So it's okay if you enjoy it or find it more romantic than I do. I'm just very confused as to how BJ and Magnolia like how their love story can be seen as romantic and it's just strange to me but um, I'm very happy that I finally got to see what all the fuss was about. Will I continue with this series? Maybe because I quite liked Daisy Hates. She had some brief appearances and I quite liked her. I did so I might try and give her book a chance but otherwise I don't see myself getting back to this series anytime soon. It was very exhausting and very very toxic. The final book I read in June was Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. This is the very first book in the Boys of Tommen series and oh my goodness I have so many different thoughts about this book. 4.25 is a very strong rating for this book. I think it was a very good introduction to this series and I really enjoyed this book. I can't stop thinking about it actually. Maybe that's because I just finished it last night but still I absolutely loved this book so much and I was very surprised to love it so much because it's so long and I do think it could have been a little bit shorter but I really had a good time with this book. It follows our two main characters named Johnny and Shannon. Johnny is a very, very popular, well-renowned rugby player. And this book takes place in Ireland, by the way. So there's a lot of fun Irish slang that I had to get used to. So that was fun. But anyways, it does follow Johnny, who is an extremely popular rugby player. And then Shannon is a new student at the Toman College. And she's had a really tough life. She has a super tough life. She's been bullied all her life at all her other schools. And this school is a new, fresh start for her. And as soon as Johnny and Shannon meet, he feels extremely protective of her. And they develop this very close bond with one another. And he looks out for her. He takes care of her. And she's very concerned about him because he puts so much pressure on himself. He doesn't really have time to do anything fun and he's always focused on rugby and pushing himself to his limit so Shannon's always very worried and concerned about him and they just kind of take care of each other and worry about each other and as the book goes on you see that Shannon has a very very tough home life going on and I won't say what it is but definitely look up some trigger warnings because it is uh, some really heavy stuff going on with Shannon and my heart just broke for her. I absolutely loved both of these characters. I think they were both written extremely well and if they of course had so much character depth because this book is 600 pages long so of course they had great character growth and development and depth and their romance was so wholesome and so sweet. I loved the way that they looked out for each other and the side characters in this book are top tier. I loved Claire, I loved Gypsy, I loved Lizzie, like the side characters were so so fun. I loved Joey as well and his girlfriend whose name I can't pronounce but I loved her so much and this book was just really well written and emotional. I didn't expect it to be so emotional and I'm very excited to continue on with this series eventually because wow what an amazing book and I highly highly recommend this. 
Thank you guys so, so much for watching my June reading wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what books you read in June. What was your favorite book that you read in June? And let me know what you're hoping to read in the month of July. I'm definitely going to be posting my July TBR very soon. And I just hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what other video ideas you want to see from me and I hope you all have an absolutely amazing rest of your day. Happy reading to you.